In this video, we're going to look at the graph of a rational function um, where we have a whole because our numerator or denominator is factorable. So for this problem, we're graphing x plus 3 over x squared plus x minus 6. And so what we want to do is rewrite g of x in factored form. So since this is a quadratic, um, we want to do the product sum um, to figure out the factors that multiply to x squared plus x minus 6 by looking at the product of 1 times negative 6, so negative 6, and the sum of 1. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. And so those numbers are 3 and negative 2 because 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. So our numerator of g of x is still x plus 3. And we just determined that our denominator can factor to x plus 3 times x minus 2. And so we want to try to simplify this by reducing out like factors. <laughs> the like factor is x plus 3. So x plus 3 reduces with itself. And so we are left with 1 over 1 times x minus 2, so 1 over x minus 2. Because we were able to reduce x plus 3, that means that our graph is going to have a whole at the value that would make x plus 3 0. So x plus 3 equals 0 at the x-coordinate negative 3. So when we're graphing this function, what we want to use in our table as one of our x values is the x value negative 3 so that we can determine where that hole is located. So we'll come back to finding the location of that hole in a second. The next thing we want to look at is the vertical asymptote of this rational function. So the vertical asymptote occurs when our denominator is equal to zero. Our denominator is currently x minus two. Okay, so we're looking at that simplified denominator, not the denominator from the original equation. The number that will make our new denominator zero is x equals two. So when x equals two, our function is undefined. So that means that our graph is going to have a vertical asymptote at the value x equals 2. Horizontal asymptotes occur depending on some rules. So one of the rules is that we're looking at the degree of our numerator compared to the degree of our denominator. So if we go back to our function in standard form before we simplified, our numerator has a degree of 1, our denominator has a degree of 2. So the degree of our numerator is less than the degree of our denominator. That automatically means that our graph has a horizontal asymptote at the value 0 for y. So that means that the x-axis is our horizontal asymptote for this graph because of the degree of the numerator in our original expression. And in our simplified expression, because that technically our numerator has a degree of 0, and our denominator has a degree of one, has a horizontal asymptote at zero. So what we want to do to find our graph is plug in two values to the left of our vertical asymptote, two values to the right. So notice that our whole negative three occurs on the left. So that means we need to pick other one other number on the left of our vertical asymptote. And so a good number to plug in is always zero. So let's also use zero on the left. We then want to pick two numbers on the right of our vertical asymptote. And so since our vertical asymptote is two, we want to pick the, just the next two numbers, which are three and four. So that means that to find the points that we're going to graph for our equation, we're going to plug in the numbers negative three, zero, three, and four into the equation we are given for g of x. So that means that for every x value, x in the equation, we're going to plug in each of these numbers. Um, so let's start with our g of negative 3, which will give us our um, whole. When we plug negative 
three into, we're always using our simplified equations to plug into. We've got one over negative three minus two, so that's negative one fifth. So our whole is at negative three, negative one fifth. So because it's a whole, we're gonna plot that point as an open dot rather than a regular dot. Then g of zero, so we're plugging zero in because that's another number on the left side of our vertical asymptote, is going to give us one over zero minus two, so that's negative one half. So at zero, we're at negative one half. That means that our graph is going to have that curved line that hugs each the horizontal and the vertical asymptote on the bottom left section of our graph. Finally, we're going to plug in positive three and positive four into our simplified equation. So g of three is going to give us one over three minus two, so that's just gonna be one. So at positive three, our y coordinate is positive one. And finally, we're gonna evaluate g of four. So that gives us one my over four minus two. So that's gonna give us a y coordinate of positive one half. So we wanna plot the point positive four, positive one half, which shows us that our curved section that hugs the horizontal and vertical asymptote is gonna be in the top right section for this graph. So again, when we're graphing a rational function, we're looking at the holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptote. When we find our vertical asymptote, that creates our graph table. We're using two values to the left of that value. Since we got two, we used negative three because it was our hole, and zero. On the left side, those are smaller numbers than two. And then we had to pick two numbers on the right side or larger than two. And so because they were closest, we picked three and four. So we want to plug those in to create this curved shape of a rational function. Ah. Sorry.